Just kidding. It's asking Greg for permission. Okay, it says meeting is being live on stream live on Facebook. Um, yet on Facebook, I'm getting a blank screen. There we go. See, we don't have those same three dots. Do you see that, Josh? You are live on Facebook right now. Yeah, I, I know that, but we're looking for something else here. Bob I just joined the meeting. Sorry for the my delay. Okay, we haven't started. <laughs> you laugh. Uh, <laughs> you showed up at the perfect time. <laughs> I guess. So uh, it's going on, uh, it's going to be on Facebook. Yeah, we couldn't get it to stream to the website. So hopefully it'll work on Facebook. Uh, can, is there something we can put on the uh, Burrow page for anyone that's still hanging out there to direct them to Facebook? It, it sends out a notification to anyone who follows that page. Like I just got one on my phone saying Swiss Fails Streaming Live Council Meeting. I think Bill means the website though, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Hey, Joss, are you able to see the screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Now, those three dots we were talking about. Uh, scroll down. Click on the set. Uh, there's like a. Um, see the settings gear down. It's kind of, we're we're kind of uh, we have layers of things here. Um, scroll up. So hover your mouse over the picture, like over the video. And see the gear down at the bottom. Yeah. Click on that. No, so that's just quality. I think you. I think the problem is he's looking at it in the live tab instead of on like the okay. pages news feed. Go click on uh, up over on the. Oh yeah. yeah, actually there you go over on the right hand side, Greg, next to Swissvale Community Borough News is live. There's your three dots. Live there. tab instead of on like the okay. pages news feed. Go click on uh, up over on the. Oh, yeah, actually, there you go. Over on the right hand side, right next to Swissvale Community Borough News Live. This is amazing. Yeah. Let's we'll see, we'll see, see what comes up there. Yeah. Uh, up, over on the, oh, yeah, actually, there you go. Over on the right hand side. I think you have to actually go, like, if you click on the Swissvale Community and Borough News page and go to the page, and then the three dots will be in the upper right hand corner of that post. But because you're in the Facebook Live like format, it's not showing you the way that the post actually looks to other people. Our news page and go to the page and then the three dots will be on the upper yeah. right. Greg, right. click where it says Swiss Fail Community and Brown News. Right. Format, it's not showing you the way that the post actually looks to other people. Now I'm forced to re-listen to my Cleveland hard A's. <laughs> there we go. Now scroll down to, we, it should be like the top post. There you go, see now if there the three go. dots work. Manage post. You can try that. Interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, close that meta business suite, Greg. Hmm. That tab, the tab that you're on. No, not the whole thing. Oops. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I think we're, we're gonna, I think we're just going to have to forge forward. Um, I mean, if we have the ability to stream it, I don't know why we're not streaming it. It's it's streaming right now. We're live. Okay. People are commenting. Forge forward. Okay. So people are we... watching us <laughs> tinkering around. Okay. Great. Um. <laughs> Live tech support from the borough. You all ready for me to start? Really 57 minutes late. Yeah. All right. All right, let's call this meeting to order. I apologize for the technical <laughs> difficulties that we have been facing, uh, having some trouble with the website today. 
Um, let's call the meeting to order at 7.57 p.m. and go to roll call. Ms. Alfonso Wells. Here. Mr. Miser. Here. Mr. Price. Here. Ms. Salisbury. Here. Ms. Scales. Here. Ms. Stribling. Here. Mayor Schwartzwelder. Here. Uh, and I am also here. So uh, I wanted to share that before we move into the regular portion of our agenda, that um, in light of some statements that were made at the last council meeting, the DEI committee has prepared a statement that Ms. Scales, chair of the committee, is going to read in just a moment. I just want to remind everyone to be uh, assured, please be assured that council is committed to the uh, efforts of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The members of council have been um, discussing this situation that we're gonna talk about, as well as uh, for uh, several months now, we've been talking about trying to find an appropriate sensitivity training for all of our employees and elected officials to continue our development and culture as a borough. So Ms. Scales, if you wanna go ahead and read DEI's statement. Thank you. <clears throat> In light of the comments made by Chief Wilhelm last week, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee has put together a statement that we would like to release. Diversity and respect for all people are core to who we are as leaders for the Borough of Swissville. Our purpose and our DEI commitment is guided by our values of integrity, honesty, respect, diversity, and inclusion. It is up to all of us to be allies and actionable in the ugly face of discrimination, injustice, and disrespect. The recent statements made by our chief of fire department are not in alignment with our values and commitment to diversity and in inclusion. Offensive and disrespectful comments have no place in our borough. And it cast a dark cloud over the progressive strides that we have made to become a more inclusive and diverse community. We are working through this negative impact to our community and assure you that our commitment to DEI is deeply held by the Borough of Swiss Bell members of council. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Scales, for reading that. Um, I'm going to take us to public comments, and I want to note that there are two public comments that were submitted, uh, one by Miranda Crotsley and another by Bonnie Spoles, which speaks specifically to the statements that were made by Mr. Wilhelm that uh, Ms. Scales just referenced in her statement. Um, I wanted to say that I have been cautioned by our solicitor uh, to not read them publicly on account of the labels and accusations that are found within, uh, but what I, I want to to the best of my ability, concisely summarize that both expressed uh, disgust with the statements. Uh, they both expressed their desire that this behavior be addressed and not be representative of the culture of Swissville. I want to acknowledge for the public that their concerns have been circulated to uh, the elected officials and the issue is being addressed. Uh, just yesterday, I, I personally met with and communicated to Mr. Wilhelm uh, the serious nature of these comments. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to highlight that for uh, Ms. Crotsley's comment and the first beginning part of uh, Ms. Spoles' comment. Uh, let me continue by reading the rest of Ms. Spoles' comment. So this is number two, item two. I am sick of being lied to in council meetings. A, Greg Batchy said that the homeowner called him because they had a contract contractor trim their hedges and not take the debris with them. This is ridiculous. A contractor would always take the debris with them. This doesn't even make sense. It just seems as if he's covering for being caught for even more petty corruption in Swissville. B, I have owned my home since 1987. In all of that time, I have never heard of calling the borough to have private pickup service, nor have any of my friends or neighbors with whom I've had discussions. Or is it only a special pickup service for friends of DPW? I've asked at least 20 short and long-term residents of Swissville, and they've never heard of the special concierge benefit. Where is it codified? I expect this call service to be noted on the borough website, the borough Facebook page, and in all of the newsletters. If the borough residents don't know of a benefit, is it a benefit? Secret benefits don't count. They just add to the real or imagined impression of corruption. I have nothing that I want done that is not being taken care of on Monday, the regular trash day. I'm offended that Mr. Batchi assumes that I want free work done by DPW. 
This type of service should be done for all residents or none, no exceptions. People notice disparate treatment, especially when it is for borough employees or council members, and they should be outraged. How are DPW employees going to work for other boroughs if they're on personal trash assistance calls for hours each week? C, this is almost as good as when Clyde told us it takes 15 minutes to get to his residence in Washington County. Number three, whatever happened to the vehicle use policy that was discussed last year, vehicles should only be used for official government business and not be used for any other reasons but borough business. Handshake agreements are just another form of corruption. Four, we need, to, we need a way to communicate when a council meeting is going on since they are not live meetings. I would have called out Mr. Batchy at that time. He made his preposterous claim in response to private debris collections in Swissville. Uh, Ms. Spoles, thank you for your comments. Um, we addressed the majority of them last week. Uh, we've been talking about them, but they have been received and we will continue to um, uh, discuss them as, as council members. Could we hear for us and for the public why it is that the solicitor wants us to censor residents' written comments? Yeah, so the, the comments that are made um, are because, and it's not, it's not true censoring, it's that uh, we, if the residents, and this is, I expressed this to you in an email before the meeting, I don't know if you had a chance to read it, uh, but in, in the email, we are talking about figuring out ways in the future for residents who want to make public comments to be able to sign on to the Zoom platform to receive an invitation to do so, make those com comments and then be able to sign off. Uh, but the solicitor was um, uh, concerned that for those comments, while they're made by a resident, for me to read them, it is an effort, in essence, the uh, the borough publicizing those and could potentially open us, open us up to liability since I am the one that is actually reading them. Uh, Bob, uh, Mr. McTiernan, did I, did I uh, phrase that adequately? Yes, it's uh, out of abundance of caution to protect the elected officials and the borough from liability. And I think council is working on an alternative way of dealing with uh, public comments that would uh, avoid that. I mean, Chris, if you're concerned about bringing liability on yourself for reading a duly submitted under the procedures that we've set up public comment, I'd be happy to read it myself. But I think that it's wrong to, I mean, basically you're just trying to protect somebody who works for the borough from being criticized by members it, of the public. It's not that I'm worried I about. A, yeah, I think that's a reach, Abigail. He's not trying to I protect disagree. Anyone. I disagree. We, I, when okay. I was president, okay. I many Hold times on. sat and read people's comments that weren't my own opinions, but it was the system we set up because of the fact that we have no council chambers. So because we set up the system of written public comment, I sat there and read people's public comments that I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, do you agree with all of what you just said about Bonnie? About no, Bonnie's Bowles' comments? It's not about the agreement of that. It's because of certain labels and accusations that were being hurled have the possibility of opening us up to liability. But Ms. Bowles just made a variety of accusations against us. She just made a variety of accusations against Mr. Batchy, against the borough, against the Department of Public Works, against council. She said, I'm tired of being lied to in council meetings. So that would imply then that she's saying that we're lying to her. There are all of these public comments that are sent in. Everybody seems fine with reading the ones that are critical of anything else. But it's only this one time that we're censoring public comment that speaks to anti-Semitic comments that were made by a borough employee in a previous meeting. Well, That's the only time that you're censoring these comments. You're totally fine with reading Ms. Spool's accusations of other formats, but not with this. Well, and that's not okay with what we have to be What we have to be careful of as representative of the borough Swissville is generalizing Ms. Scales, Ms. Scales, I appreciate your input, but you're not the borough solicitor, neither am I. So I would like you're to hear it from the solicitor the himself. I would like to hear it from the solicitor okay. himself. All right. Ella, I, I would like to move on. Um, if, I don't want to move these, on. I don't these, think this is okay. I think we're engaging in content-based restriction of our resident speech. I don't think this is okay. Mr. McTiernan, would you like to chime in once more before I move on? Yes, there is not unusual in a public meeting to have some, uh, you know, standards of how both time, place, and, uh, and manner, as, but also uh, in terms of certain types of accusations or language that might not be appropriate for a public meeting or might be an accusation that could open people up to liability. I, my advice was based on an abundance of caution. I think some of the language that was used was uh, uh, cause for concern. Uh, 
And uh, I think the issue is cause for concern. I mean, we, again, Ms. Foles made a variety of other accusations against the borough. Those were all red that were apparently, you know, engaging in, uh, I don't know if you call it private inurement, but we're engaging in assisting um, borough employees and private individuals with picking up things that we don't provide to other people, vehicle use policy, et cetera. There's a variety of accusations that we read out every time we meet. It's just this one time that it has to do with anti-Semitism and we're not able to read that out. And if we're engaging in time, place and manner restrictions, then that would tend to indicate that at a different time, in a different place and in a different manner, we're gonna make these public, are we? Are we going to post them on Facebook? Are we going to put them on the website? Are we going to read them out in a different place? Are we going to post them on lamp uh, and street lamps or something? You know, I don't understand this one time about this one audio. issue. Anyone else? No, I'm still here. I'm okay. still here. It's just this one time in this one issue that this seems to be out of an abundance of caution. We've never once had an abundance of caution for anybody else's criticism about anything ever. So I would like to state that I'm following the caution by our solicitor and that as the DEI statement at the beginning stated that their concern, well, it didn't state, but their concerns have been heard. We are publicly addressing what was stated last week. There was a statement that said that we do not condone that behavior or statement. Uh, there are, so DEI has discussed it. Personnel is discussing it. It is not being swept under the rug. We it's are all being swept under Chris, the rug. You're saying it's all being discussed Chris, internally among committees. Can, We're can not I, allowing public comments anymore on these Facebook streams. That's been taken away from people. Now you're saying that you can censor based on content, residents' public comments. That's not okay. It's can, not okay. Can, if these people came in and were making these comments in a, in an in-person meeting, would you clamp a hand over their mouths and pull them away from the microphone? Would you play Fox News and yell, cut their mic, cut their mic? This is not okay. Just the fact that you're doing it online doesn't make it any different. You're still engaging in censorship because you don't want to have information that people are sending out as residents about an, an official here who works for the borough. And it's this one issue of anti-Semitism. Ms. Salisbury, you've made your point. Restrict. Let's let Josh say something. Can, can I ask a question of the solicitor to try to satisfy the request for these comments to be made public while not having a borough official read them, would it be possible to put the PDF of the comment and attach it on the website to tonight's meeting so that people can read the comment, but it is not at, while it is not being stated by a public official? That, that might be a, uh, an appropriate compromise. I, I would just say that statements at a public meeting are not completely unrestrained. The, the municipal uh, officials have the right to regulate the meeting and to have a, a meeting that's uh, uh, conducted in a regular, ordinary, civil way. And it's not the same as what a citizen publishes in a newspaper. But that could be a potential compromise if council wants to look at that. And then I know that the council is looking at letting people have their own um, say in the meetings and find a way of, of uh, accessing public comment. So I'll say again, if the concern is having a member of council read it and Mr. Ansel does not want to be the one to read it, I'm happy to read it. Because if we're putting it in print on the website, then I, it's still borough speech. We're still putting it up there. So I'm happy to read it out. But what I'm not happy about is that I, this is my fifth year on council and I fought tooth and nail just to get meetings live streamed ever at all. When we first started doing it on Facebook, I had to fight to get that. And we did it with an iPad or somebody's phone, but it was better than nothing. And I had to fight for that. And I took a lot of BS for that, frankly. And so now that we're doing it in this format, I'm really disappointed that since you've become president, you've taken away live commenting, you're censoring residents' public comments now. It's not okay. This is not okay. I don't, I'm not trying to make a slippery slope argument here, but I'm very curious as to why this is the one subject that's ever been censored. And I am very concerned that since you've become president, you're restricting people's speech. I have heard your um, disappointment. Thank you for your comments. We're gonna continue to move on. All right, the next public comment comes from uh, Frank Berry. Good evening, Swissville Borough Council, Mayor and Swissville Borough staff. 
May a very blessed Law Enforcement Officers Month and Correctional Officers Month be enjoyed by all and a very blessed and special Mother's Day 2022 to everyone as well. A peaceful Memorial Day 2022 to Yin's guys as well. Please pray for the security and safety of Ukraine. It is so nice to enjoy all our parks and green spaces yet again while not freezing so much while doing so. The People's Gas Company contractors have done a great job in the Schley Avenue, Monroe Street and Florence Street area of Swissville, PA while upgrading their pipelines. Please keep in mind, as of June 2022, our Swissville Farmers Market, Swissville's first ever local pride event coming up on the 5th of June 2022, and the Swissville Carnegie Free Libraries Concerts on the Lawn series will be gearing up for the current 2022 season. Hope to see Yin's guys there and around Swissville Borough, a special place, home rule county of Allegheny, the great state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, respectfully submitted Frank Berry, Swissville Historical Commission. And then our last public comment comes from uh, Real-Time Interventions who want to share a little bit about uh, their programming. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for having us. We would like to talk a little bit about what, well, first of all, I wonder if all of us can just take a deep breath for just a moment. I know I need one. All right. We would um, love to talk to you a little bit about what uh, we have done in the past and then talk about what we could potentially do in Swissvale as artist residents um, for Swissvale. So first of all, my name is Molly Rice. My name is Rusty Thielen. And we are real-time interventions. We are a, a community-fueled performance arts company that celebrates real stories of real people in real places. Um, we are housed here in Swissville, PA since 2013. And we've been creating theater that connects human beings through empathy in Pittsburgh since 2015. Um, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the work. I do have a slideshow. Would it be all right if I share my screen? Or is that going to be crazy with all nope. of that? Go ahead and share it. Okay. Oh, it might be. Okay, sorry. Let me see if this works. Is the whole screen? Yep. Not so much. Let me um. I can see it. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Um, so this will work. We love technology. Okay, so um, yeah, so we uh, celebrate stories of real people and real places in our work. Um, we've done theatrical works like the Saints Tour Braddock. This was in 2015. It traces the real and imagined history of a neighborhood while working with the residents of that community to highlight the magic and talent that already exists in that place. Um, we've done this, I've done this show since 20, uh, 2009 across the country in various neighborhoods. And it, when I say it's neighborhood specific, it is literally a show that can only be done in the neighborhood where um, where we do it. It's rewritten for every neighborhood. We partner with local businesses um, and organizations in Braddock. We partnered with over 20 partners, um, musicians, organizational partners, even another theater company to make theater magic and foster local unity. We did a show called Angel Makers, Songs for Female Serial Killers. And while they, that may sound uh, sort of stressful, um, <laughs> to say the least. It's actually a show about empathy and how can we stretch the definition of humanity to include those who have done horrible things. Um, so again, we're reaching toward that, that question of empathy. Um, it had standing room only crowds in, uh, in Pittsburgh when we did it. And then we took it to New York in 2018 and had a sold out uh, show at 54 Below. Our next show was called Karaki. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, I worked with the Office of Public Art and a refugee resettlement agency to create a show for and with the refugee population in Pittsburgh. And Real Time produced that show in various neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. Um, it was built around the women's desire to open the first Afghan food business in Pittsburgh, which they did. Uh, it's called Saffron Afghan Cuisine, and they are 
serving folks now. The show garnered nominations for the Mayor's Award for Public Art and the Carol R. Brown Award and was the subject of a WQED documentary that was nominated for an Emmy. Um, Karaki was a huge success for real time and for our Afghan collaborators and really showed that art can help support small businesses and entrepreneurship while celebrating the rich cultures of immigrants and refugees. In 2020, we presented a season of socially distanced programming, including Sharon, which was a toy theater series filmed locally in Swiss Vale and based on real Pittsburgh childcare workers affected by COVID, including one who was working in Swiss Vale at the time. Um, so that was our little toy theater uh, presentation. Um, we also did online programming, uh, a couple of shows, one called Associate, one called Inspire under the banner Real Time Presents. These were interactive online shows that featured BIPOC artists and personalities. These shows expanded our network of diverse fellow artists exponentially and introduced us to new collaborators and um, paved the way for upcoming programming. And one of my favorite shows of these was uh, Inspire, which was a show in which we brought um, fe uh, Black female uh, spiritual leaders from different religions together to talk about what art gets them through a time of difficulty and crisis. So we have Leanne Younger, who um, is a Christian leader, and Michelle King, who's a Buddhist, and they had an incredible conversation um, in August of 2020. It was curated by Camila Adams, who is also a Swiss Vale resident yes. and a podcaster. So. Okay, and um, sorry, my, um, my slides are acting weird. I apologize for jumping around. And then we did the Birth of Paper last year, June of 2021. This was an international work of humanitarian theater right in the middle of the pandemic, involving over 60 participants and partners here in Pittsburgh and in Beirut, Lebanon. Um, it included Swiss Vale artists like the paper lady, Katie Dement, some of you might know her, and a mixed media artist, Melanie Marshall who lives here in Swiss Vale. And it used the mail and live performance to connect everyday Pittsburghers with citizens of Beirut, Lebanon, which is still undergoing a devastating economic crisis. Um, we unearthed a historic connection between Mount Lebanon and Beirut, Lebanon, which surprised us and possibly other residents of both communities as well. Um, does anybody know the history of Mount Lebanon, why it got its name? It got its name from two trees that were brought over by a minister in the mid 1800s. Um, they were cedars of Lebanon. And uh, those trees were so distinctive that uh, eventually the township just lost its name of Scott Township and became known as Mount Lebanon. So that's something we discovered in our work. Mm -hmm. And then um, that show, this show, uh, The Birth of Paper, was a part of a festival of plays by mail, postal plays that evolved over 160 international artists and theaters. And our post theatrical received nods. Oh, sorry, my rainbow wheel of death here. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to continue. Um, Oops, it yeah. dropped. There we go. Yeah, so Post Theatrical Festival received nods from American Theater, New York Times, New Yorker, Vulture, and a lot of local media outlets too, Post Gazette, WSA, Pittsburgh Magazine, and City Paper, among others. Um, and then in 2022, which is our most recent production, um, we started People of Pittsburgh, which was a new series uh celebrating extraordinary ordinary pittsburghers and rusty's going to talk a little more about that sure um people of pittsburgh is led by diverse teams of artists who create theatrical portraits of extraordinary ordinary pittsburghs in a variety of neighborhoods uh, not only does it celebrate residents in their communities directly through its storytelling and art but it also promotes local businesses through the playbill sponsorships um, in our first production we had several swiss fail businesses featured in our first playbill along uh, other uh, neighborhoods, including Sharpsburg, Squirrel Hill, and Regent Square. So that was a 
a page out of our program that you're seeing there with a couple of Swiss Vale businesses. Um, and then our first episode was the Alchemist of Sharpsburg, which was about an individual from Sharpsburg. It was incredibly fascinating. That just just closed at the City Theater uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and had uh, great coverage, great reviews from the Pittsburgh Tatler, KDKA's, um, Pittsburgh Today Live, uh, No Proscenium, and Pittsburgh Magazine um, called it a top pick. So. Yeah, so I um, wanted to talk a little bit about what we would love to do in Swissvale. We'd love to do a project that is a little bit like People of Pittsburgh, a little bit like the Saints Tour, um, that really involves a, a huge number of co uh, collaborations and partnerships with various organizations from Sisters PGH to the Still Mill to um, all of the folks that we know here in in Swiss Vale, that uh, to us would be a great uh, use of the residency. Um, I do feel confident that it would bring people in from other neighborhoods, and we would very much like to um, highlight not only the talent that exists here in Swiss Vale, but also the businesses and um, all of the great work that you all are doing as well in terms of civic practice. So. Thanks for letting us come and talk a little bit about our work. Just wanted to make sure you know who we are. Uh, and I hope that we can work with you all in the future. Molly and Rusty, thank you so much for the work that you've done and sharing that with us this evening. Thank you. OK, let's move into the uh, council action. So I would like to entertain a motion for the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of the March 30th, 2022 Council Agenda Meeting and the April 6th, 2022 Council Meeting. Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Please say nay. All right. Motion carries. Motion passes. All right. Next, we have um, item B under personnel. I'd like to entertain a motion for borough manager. I move to appoint. appoint. Go ahead. Okay. I move to appoint Greg Bocci as borough manager effective May 5th, 2022, at an annual salary of $99,000 and subject to the terms and conditions of the employment agreement. I second that. Great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to state that um, just a little background for the public watching that. You know, in our uh, we've had two now interim periods that Mr. Batchy has uh, been the acting or interim borough manager, and he has done a phenomenal job during that. Uh, he was a, a really significant contributor to that two point five million dollar grant that we received from um, the RCAP uh, process. Um, kind of how this went, uh, kind of went through is uh, personnel uh, interviewed him, had some questions, asked him about his vision, what he needed to get there. Uh, what a you know kind of an ideal team would look like some of those types of things what um, a Angela in particular I know asked some some really uh, pointed questions about uh, times where he didn't know what to do or um, you know struggles that, that he may have had at times which I think really were, were some great avenues uh, personnel then gave a recommendation to council of which it was a, a, a agreed upon uh, were I know all of us are excited to have Mr. Batchy uh, in place confident of his leadership and uh, really looking forward to him being able to fill out the remaining staffing needs. So I just want to give some of that background. Any other comments? Anything from personnel committee or any others? Okay. Just to make a decision. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Angela. Uh, yes, I just, I just think this is a good decision. Um, I've been on council, you know, just since January, and he's been very helpful in my transition. Um, in this role and anything that I've needed and any other members, I'm sure he's definitely transparent and he's definitely calm and patient and he's definitely a, a, what the borough is looking for as far as leadership goes. So I'm glad to have him. Yeah. Ms. Alfonso Wells, sorry that you got cut off there. Go oh, no, that's fine. I like listening to Angela. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would just say that um, we did do an extensive process um, in terms of trying to find this borough manager and um, in looking at Greg specifically. Uh, but in addition to that, we're also working on a plan to reorganize a lot of what's going on in terms of personnel at the borough level. 
Um, there are certain things that the borough needs right now, and we were put into a, a, a rather interesting position because of you know different people leaving and and the past way uh, the borough was uh, structured. So we are going over that in the personnel co committee and seeing what the borough's needs are specifically and trying to address those needs through personnel. All right, well, let's take the vote. All in favor of hiring Greg Batchy as the borough manager, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Congratulations, Greg. You are no longer interim or acting borough manager. You are our borough manager. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your confidence in me, and I really look forward to uh, to working with everyone. Thank you very much. All right, let's move to our resolutions dealing with the vacant property recovery program. Resolution twenty two zero eight. Anyone? I move to approve resolution 22-08 to allow for the acquisition of vacant land known as tax parcel ID 178-M-104 located at 7507 Count Met Street through the vacant property recovery program. Second. Second, any discussion or questions about this one? I know we talked about it last week. All right, let's vote on it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed, say nay. All right, motion passes. Next one, 2209. I, I move, move to approve resolution 22-09 to allow for the acquisition of vacant land known as tax parcel ID. 235-F-15, located at 7676 Howland Avenue through the Vacant Property Recovery Program. Second. Thank you very much. It's on the table. Any conversations or discussion around this? All right, let's vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion passes. We got two more properties out of uh, Borough uh, grass cutting for the summer, which is nice. All right, let's move to our contract. So the first contract is for the Denison Sanitary Sewer. If I can have someone entertain that motion. I move to approve a contract in the amount of $209,930 with independent enterprises for the replacement of the Denison Avenue Sanitary Sewer Line Project. I need a second. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, any discussion around that? Mr. Mr. Batchy, can you remind me how much we have? Because uh, th that's not all coming out of borough pocket. Um, a, a large chunk is coming in from a grant. The grant is $126,500. And that was predicated on a, on a price of about $190,000 that we estimated um, because the COG through the county CBG program, you can get up to 65% of the cost. I'm going to go back to the COG and ask them if they would entertain um, increasing the grant amount because um, sometimes they have projects that don't go through and we can get additional money. So we might be able to get another 10 to 14,000. So see, you know, doesn't hurt to ask. So our share is 80, at this point, it's 83,000. Which would come out of the sewer fund. That's what we have the sewer fund for, right? Correct. Yes. Great. All right. Um, any other comments about it? Well, let's vote. Uh, all in favor of approving this bid or this contract, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion passes. Now we've got the ones for the McKeg Street DPW building. I move to approve a contract in the amount of $182,168 with Newman Plumbing for plumbing, underground piping, and related appurtenances appurtenances in the dpw building second second all right any conversation around this this is one of three bids that we put out uh, actually one of four if you count the roof um any comments about it miss scales are you commenting or are you talking to us 
My apologies. That's no, okay. it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I just saw your mouth moving, making sure. Uh, all right. Well, let's call the question. All in favor of approving this contract, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say nay. All right. Motion passes. Contract has been awarded. Uh, let's move on to the next one. I move to approve a contract in the amount of 138270000 with plaf check construction for concrete curbs, concrete sidewalk, and handicap ramp construction at the DPW building. Second. Any, any comments? All right, let's vote. All in favor of approving this contract, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Okay, motion passes, contract has been awarded and we've got one more. I move to approve a contract in the amount of $113,474.30 with El Grande in Industries for bituminous pavement replacement at the DPW building. Second. All right, any additional comments? I wish we didn't have to say words like bituminous and <laughs> or the whatever the one tenses. Yeah. Pertinences. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's vote on this. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. please say nay. All right, motion passes. All right, that that uh, public works building is incrementally moving forward. Wonderful. All right, let's move to the demolition light declarations. Real quick question before I ask for this motion. Uh, can they be done, all, do they have to be done individually or can they be done all as one motion? If, uh, if, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. McTiernan. Uh, if there's no objection, you could do them as one if everybody's in agreement. Unless there's some reason Mr. Batchy wants to handle them individually. I don't think there's a need to. Yeah. Think, okay. Let, if, if anyone wants to take one of them out and vote on it separately, they could just request that. If there are, I think you could vote on uh, together. Okay. So let's uh, start with all of them together. If someone wants to pull one, they can pull it um, after we've put it on the floor. Oh, I move to approve. Do you want me to do that? Yes, please. Okay. I move to approve the recommendation of the building code official and to order the demolition of the following properties. A, 7714 Edgewood Avenue, B, 7540 Armand Street, C, 2633 Farkas Place, D, 2246 Manor Avenue, E, 2521 Woodstock Avenue, F, 2206 Hawthorne Avenue, G, 2256 Hawthorne Avenue, H, 2258 Hawthorne Avenue, I, 2520 South Braddock Avenue. I'll second the motion. Great, motion is on the floor. Any discussion around this or any that, any properties that someone wants to pull? If I could just interject, Mr. Ansel. Yes, please do. The, uh, we did have a, a person, a property owner come last week and state his concerns with his properties being on there. And you know we had asked him to provide some information to us what he would do with those properties and some financial information. We have not heard back from him yet. Um, It'll probably be three to four months before these the demolitions occur. If he comes forward and starts rehabbing these buildings in, the, in that time, we can always pull them from the bid. Um, you know, this doesn't mean they have to come down, but if we don't, if we take them out now, then we have to start the process all over. So I would just recommend we make the motion to, uh, or we approve the motion to uh, order, the dem order the demolition of all of them. And if he comes forward and makes uh, some strides uh, in doing that, then we'll, we'll just pull them from, from the bid package. Great, thank you. All right, let's vote. All in favor of this approved list, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion passes. We've got a motion for EV charging. I move to authorize the initiation of discussion between council staff, the solicitor's office, and Green Edge regarding curbside electric vehicle charging in Swissville. Second. All right. And as we talked about last week, this is uh, we are not entering in, in, into any kind of contractual agreement with them. This is uh, a way that we can continue to figure out more information. Um, 
I know that one resident last month submitted some public comment asking some really good questions. So answering those types of questions as well as uh, helping us to continue to figure out uh, ordinance needs for this type of uh, technology in our borough. Any other comments? I'm excited. Yeah, I think it'll be really good. Yeah, I think it's exciting, yeah. It feels like it's one of these things where we're ahead of the curve a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. You just gotta talk somebody into sitting in your car and drive them around Swiss Vale until they agree to make you their pilot community. No, don't kidnap people, but <laughs> it worked in this situation. Drive them voluntarily. Yes. All right, well, let's vote on this motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion carries. Let's move on to our reports. Uh, finance report, there is still one more motion that needs to be made. I move to approve the Borough of Swissvale paid bills in the amount of $333,156.48. Second. All right, any comments about that? We don't want to be deadbeat, so let's pay it. Let's pay it. Sounds good. All right, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion carries. Um, Mr. Batchy, is there anything else we need to address with finance? No. Okay, all right, let's move on. Next is the COG report, Ms. Scales. Hello. So, Ms. Angela Stribling will be Thank providing you. that report today. I'm sorry. I forgot. That is yes. fine. Ms. Stribling. We'll be providing the report today. Yes. Go ahead, Angela. Okay, great. So I did attend the meeting on Thursday, April 28th, um, and it was a visual meeting, a virtual, excuse me. So um, the information reported was up. we have upcoming meetings coming. May 18th will be the manager's meeting. May 17th will be the police chief meeting. And May 26th, the TCV COG board meeting again. That many will be um, at Roma Bistro. Um, so Mr. Bachi, you might be getting information from me because I'll be in attendance at that meeting as well. Um, and we discuss our various meetings towards the end of the year um, during the meeting. Um, then we talked about the application for the 501c3. Additional information was submitted as requested and that application is still pending review. Um, I heard that the um, ALOM Seven Springs event was a success. Um, they're actually looking for people to um, give their feedback on what they felt about the rooms and the actual event. So if you have any input on that, you know, you can let us know. We can um, bring that forward and, you know, take that back to the meeting. Um, the grant, there are still grants available um, that still are available to be submitted for the Act 152 application through the COG. Uh, but there are grants for Braddock, East McKeesport, Moreauville, North Braddock, North for Sales, Penn Hills, Pitt Karen. Plum, Franken, Turtle Creek, Wilkins, and Wilmerding. And we anticipate that those funding decisions will be available early July. Um, also, um, we have a new website. So uh, we have a website. So if you have any community updates that you want to bring across, we you know let them know about what's going on in Switzerland and other surrounding communities. So if you need any information, um, to submit it to Natalie and she'll put it on the website. Um, the email is um, nmarola at tzbcog.com, or you can call the office and leave a message. Um, the factor, please remember to complete and submit your opt-in agreement. No price increase in 2022. Uh, the police training, tentative training dates for the spring and fall rounds of police training are as follows. Please plan to send your officers. Um, registration information has been emailed to the police chiefs. Um, the basic one is May 9th through May 10th, which um, should be actually coming up. And then advanced May 16th and May 17th, it will be two one-day classes. Then the basic again would be October 10th through 11th. And then the advance would be October 17th and 18th. Um, the code, enforce, code enforcement, uh, we are also on track to launch code enforce towards the end of this summer. Much progress has been made. Um, call code inspectors have defined functionality and are currently testing in the field. Program officers for the Hellman Foundation will be visiting and doing a demo on Friday, May 6th. After the demo, we're planning to take them to observe an occupancy inspection 
and give them a tour for participating and interested soon to be. Um, one moment. Oh, here we go. And soon to be um, participating towns. Um, there is, we are planning to announce that our application for the LGA intern program has been selected. Um, they're an Annie Treat. She will be interning with the COG this summer. Um, she's a CMS student working on her master's in public policy and management and data analytics. Her main focus will be supporting data into the code and force system, testing the system and coding support. Amy will also have opportunities to participate and learn about some of our operations, such as grant management, workforce development and code enforcement, utility billing and community outreach. And we are so excited to welcome Annie to the office this summer. Um, managers meeting was on April 20th, 2022, and they discussed more offer, um, the filling up of the offer forms, which are still due or which we're still due in April. Um, the last thing that I have is that on April 25th, Ann Lewis, Joy Ruff, and, and um, Amanda requested to meet with IOP staff and consultants to discuss a policy study. They're looking for data from 17 undisclosed towns with a population greater than 10,000 to understand how decisions to arrest are made. And this will be a blind study. The purpose is to determine if racial bias plays a role in arrest rates and if so, create implemental strategies to prevent this from happening. They have been working with the Attorney General's Office and the City of Pittsburgh, who have recently agreed to participate. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Tribling. You're welcome. I'll try to remember if you're doing it again next time <laughs> to call on you. Let's keep moving and go to Connect Report. Ms. Alfonso Wells. Yes, yeah, so I gave a lot of information um, last a uh, week in terms of what was going on to, with Connect and it remains the same. In addition, um, we have continued on with LEAD. We're making vast strides. Once again, I do believe that the program will be implemented before um, the end of the year. Um, we have been on a variety of, um, of meetings with them. Uh, they're revving up. So we have one at least every week, um, so to speak. So that's great. Okay, and then um, I think next week, um, not next week, on the 19th, uh, Connect is going to be voting in its new leadership for this, uh, for the upcoming year, and I am on the roster for vice president. Um, not no. this year, I know. <laughs> uh, this year I was co-vice president, and um, I, I shared the spot. I didn't do much, I don't think, but <laughs> next year I I will be flying solo and will be uh, the, the VP standing solo. So that's interesting and exciting. They're um, voting in a new president. And um, I, I think it's, it's really kind of rotating. People just take turns doing things. So this is just exciting. I will be trying to bring more projects uh, to Swissvale or getting us involved in more of these uh, types of projects. I know they have a project going on um, to try and get more volunteer firefighters, um, and they're 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 doing um, uh, they're doing various things. We had a whole um, conference about it, and so that's something that I, I'm particularly interested in. I think that it's so important um, that we support um, uh, our fire department because you know if your house is on fire, you want somebody to to be there uh, to be able to put the fire out. So. Um, that is something I'm interested in. And they have a lot of different um, solutions that they're trying to come up with. It's, it's a tough issue. Um, we've lost, I think, and, and, and don't quote me uh, because I know I'm wrong, but I, I think we went down from, I don't know, 10 years ago, like 350,000 to like 33,000. I know those numbers are absolutely wrong, but we went from a really large number to a very small number of volunteer firefighters. In, um, since you know, since the 80s and 90s, so to speak, which would not be 10 years ago, but um, uh, our our departments are shrinking, and so that's something we need to look at in terms of how do we incentivize people um, to do these jobs and to be volunteers, and how can we can actually uh, change the structure. And I do believe um, uh, that many of the fire departments are are interested in looking at that. Um, in addition. Uh, 
connect, remains um, committed to trying to uh, get connections <laughs> between the various neighborhoods and regions. And we continue to do that. We continue to meet. Um, I do believe at least monthly, if not three or four times within that month for the various committee assignments. Um, I have nothing to report on those at the moment because we are just continuing on and nothing has necessarily um, changed in one way or another, but we are meeting and um, that is exciting. I really feel that we are um, moving and changing the world. So I'm glad to be a part of that. And I'm glad that uh, we are also um, members of this because I feel that it's able to connect us to our um, uh, to our neighboring communities. And just for example, um, at the last meeting, I was talking to uh, various other representatives of Braddock Hills, Penn Hills, um, and Rankin. And so we were talking about different things that our neighborhoods are doing and talking about collaborations. Um, I've also um, been talking to, I think there was a member of um, Ed Ganey's uh, team over there, and he also wants to talk to us specifically in Swissvale about some of the uh, programs we're doing, and, and I think specifically in terms of the LEAD program and, um, and, and how we're bringing in social workers and wants us to be a part of this, and, and was just wanted to talk to us about what types of social workers we're bringing in, so on and so forth. So, I mean, when I when when they say that this is something that connects us to other neighborhoods, they, they really mean it. And and that's not to mention all the other neighborhoods that we're in conjunction with um, from these meetings. So, uh, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm glad that I'm able to bring these connections. And once again, I will remind everyone: you are all invited to any of these meetings at any time, please don't be shy. Um, I have, uh, I, I do not, I do not want to hoard all the glory of connect to myself. I am more than willing to let everybody take a, a, a you know, a front seat row, uh, role um, in connect if you want to. So they are, they are looking for people and they will suck you in. So anybody who wants to be sucked into a, you know, a particularly friendly community, please come on and I will invite you on over there. That is the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alfonso Wells uh, for that connect report. All right, I have just three things that I wanna bring up uh, for the president's remarks. Um, uh, the first is I just wanna again, congratulate Mr. Batchy on his appointment to borough manager. Um, I've really enjoyed my time working with him uh, I look forward to having him in this role long term. He is just a wealth of knowledge of how municipal management is. Uh, he, I think that was one of the things that was discussed was that um, any other borough managers are hard to come by nowadays, uh, but any other borough manager has a learning curve. And we've got a lot going on as a borough right now with this building project, well, multiple building projects, uh, short staffed, all of those types of things. And so he, he absolutely has a lot of a wealth of experience. Um, he also, one of the things I've really appreciated about him is that he has uh, repeatedly uh, expressed how amenable he is to taking the visions and directions of council and implementing them. Uh, you know, he, he is, he's here to take our vision and to, to make, it, make it work. So again, really excited to be working with him going forward. The second comment I wanted to make, I don't know if any of you got a chance to see uh, the Woodland Hills High School musical Shrek. Uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, my, my whole family went, we went to a couple different showings, uh, but the, there are, I know there are a number of Swissville residents that were involved in that. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the borough of Swissville that we are very proud of all the hard work that they put into it and uh, wish them the best of luck for the Gene Kelly Awards coming up later this month. <laughs> Lastly, uh, I wanted to uh, bring up the Washington Street Bridge. Um, I know we don't have a specific item on the agenda for it. Uh, I know this was brought up at the last meeting and uh, it, it's evident that it has, it has caused, um, it's been a source of anxiety for a number of people in the community. And I just wanted to state that we are proactively doing what we can to uh, expedite the repair and ultimate uh, replacement of this bridge. Uh, I wanna give a big thank you to Abigail who, or Ms. Salisbury, I should say on, on here, who motivated the public to reach out uh, to tweet Norfolk Southern 
uh, and for connecting uh, uh, Senator Jay Costa to aid in this process as well. She worked really hard to make the phone calls and kind of rally the troops there. Uh, as of yesterday, I want to report that we have heard uh, from Norfolk Southern. They contacted the borough. Uh, and frankly, it was not because of the letter that Mr. Batchy and I sent three months ago. It was because of all the noise that the residents were creating. Uh, they're like, what is going on with this? And so they reached out to us. So finally now the borough, Norfolk Southern, Port Authority are all at the same table and we can finally get uh, this, this project moving, uh, which is really exciting. So in the meantime, I wanna also report that Mr. Batchy is in the process of connecting with engineering firms to get a, a second opinion on the, uh, the bridge inspection, the data that was collected that had been done two months ago. Um, and I just, again, wanna thank everyone for their hard work in, in helping this project develop the necessary momentum because as we've talked about, Norfolk Southern is uh, notorious for, for uh, uh, or they, they seem to be known for um, not always being the most responsive. So thank you to all of you residents who were tweeting at them and, and uh, getting, getting us on their radar. Are there, I mean, I guess before we move on, um, just in case there's anyone else that wanted to comment instead of bringing it up at the end, since I've already brought it up, uh, any, any additional comments about the bridge now that I've broached that subject? I, um, I hope that being contacted actually leads to some sort of repair effort. Um, I, I posted online initially because while people were not ready to make what's obviously a drastic step of closing the bridge, I did feel like people had the right to know and make their own informed decision about whether they want to use it or not, since it's a major thoroughfare through the area. Um, when I spoke to Jay Costa on the phone about it, um, I had originally spoken to someone in his office and then he called me right back and he was very concerned about it. He's taking it very seriously um, because obviously there's a, a risk of the train tracks, the bus, pedestrians, uh, you know, cars, of course, there's all kinds of different hazards that are um, possible if, if something went wrong with this. So he is taking it very, very seriously. Um, and he reached out also himself to Norfolk Southern because from what I understand, he's developed um, some contacts uh, there of his own. So I know that um, it was our residents reaching out did make a big difference. Um, and I saw former council president, uh, Michelle Stanton reached out to them online. So um, NPR read my comment that I tweeted at them about the issue. So um, people are paying attention and I would encourage people who are listening uh, to residents to keep the pressure on because we don't want them to think that we just forgot about it. Well stated. If I, if I could just add to that, the, when I spoke to the gentleman from Norfolk Southern yesterday, he was quite annoyed um, that he was dealing with this. And he said, we're getting all these tweets and all these emails from your residents. He said, what is going on there? And I told him, I said, well, the residents are concerned there. I said, our council's concerned and this is not going to go away. I told him, I said, so it'd be best off we get something, you know, get a meeting together and figure out what we're going to do to make this bridge safe, safer. And, uh, and just tell them that, and just told them that, you know, we're not going away. And our residents, um, once they, once they dig into something, they're going to stick on it. So they'll be hearing from us if there's no action hearing from, uh, Norfolk Southern will be hearing from Swiss if there's no action. So the, uh, the rallying of the troops did a, did, a, did a good job. I do have a question because some people ask me this and frankly, I don't know the answer, um, but this is more of a solicitor question, but um, some people have asked me if there's any option for us to take legal action against the railroad if they end up refusing to do anything. And I don't really know how that works. So I thought I would ask. Yes, um, the bridge, as I think I mentioned briefly before, is within the jurisdiction of the Public Utility Commission because it goes over a railroad. So any legal action or petition would be before the Public Utility Commission. And in fact, the borough has had several major repairs of the bridge in the past. The most recent one, it's still quite a long time ago, but it was in the late 70s where the bridge a major repair was done. And that was done pursuant to a PUC order uh, which made uh, the railroad responsible for the substructure and the borough responsible for the cartway and the sidewalk. And then we had an issue with the sidewalk a number of years ago, and that was within the borough's jurisdiction. One of the things that's changed that's interesting is when the last PUC order was issued, 
there was no uh, use of the busway. Uh, so I think that brings the Port Authority into the mix as well. But the legal, any legal action would take place before the Public Utility C Commission. We have gone to the commission in the past over uh, the bridges, including the Washington Street Bridge. And if that were to happen, all of the stakeholders and parties would be made party to the action, including the Port Authority and, uh, and the railroad and the other uh, municipal entities. So that's the fundamental uh, answer to your question is it's the Public Utility Commission that has the final jurisdiction. Thank you. I, I have to tell you when I saw that, um, I assume everybody saw that that truck rolled off the Rankin Bridge and down the hill. Um, there was a 18 wheeler that went down the hill and had quite a bad accident. I guess it was carrying tar or something, maybe bituminous tar. Um, but the, uh, the first thing I thought was for some reason, my brain didn't click. And I like, I just saw a truck bridge and I said, oh my God, did the bridge fall down? Like I, for some reason, that was the very first thing that I thought of when I saw that this truck had had an accident by us because somebody texted me and said, did you see the truck rolled off the road? I'm like, oh, great. So I just want to make sure that isn't something that ever actually happens <laughs> that, um, you know, our bridge doesn't end up failing. Fortunately, nobody died or there was no fire or anything from from that other truck accident. So that was a scary one. Anyway. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you to everyone who is applying that pressure. Keep it up. All right, mayor's report, Ms. Schwartzwelder. Good evening, everyone. I'll be brief. I just wanna thank everyone who attended and volunteered at our 27th annual egg hunt at Memorial Field. 27 years we've been doing it, we actually only had 26 actual egg hunts, but it was very well attended. We had almost 100 uh, enthusiastic egg hunters and everyone got a lot of prizes. So I hope everyone had a good time. We had a great time. Thank you again. Um, I just wanna remind everyone that the uh, Western Pennsylvania Conservancy Parkway planting is this Saturday at 9 a.m. on Braddock Avenue. If you'd like to volunteer to plant flowers, I believe in the rain, um, to show up at nine o'clock, we have all the all the stuff you need. And this is this site is again sponsored by Sedco this year. So thank you, Sedco, and hope to see you all there. Uh, the Rotary of Swissville is sponsoring a trivia night on June 11th at Goodfellas Banquet Room from five to nine. We are encouraging teams of four to participate for friendly competition, prizes, and a fun night of food, drink, and raffles. So come on out and support your Swiss Bell Rotary. Any questions or comments? Um, I encourage council to get a team together, team or two, and come on out for a, a fun night. And that's my report. Bill, you look like you wanted to say something earlier, but we're muted. I was going to say the same thing. I would encourage council to uh, field a team and um, maybe public works could field a team or the fire department, um, uh, churches, citizen groups. You know, this could be a great event. I've won my share of bar trivia nights in the past. Just, uh, just putting that out there. <laughs> you can change the whole Do You Like Pina Colada songs. <laughs> And uh, started with, do you like pina coladas and uh, planting flowers in the rain or something like that um, as the new love song. Um, Deneen, I did have a question for you and, and maybe it's also for Sarah, um, but the um, Swiss Bell Community Climate Action Committee uh, was wanted to see if any of you have any photos of Swissvale and Bill, maybe, because I know you have lots of photos, uh, photos of Swissvale um, that we can include in the climate action report um, of different areas of maybe people doing things in Swissvale, like planting things um, and different things like that, uh, or different events like um, uh, community days and so on and so forth. Um, they would like to include this in the, in, in the report. And uh, this is probably the best way to ask if anybody has anything, please. Um, we would like some of your photos to include. Is there, a, is there a deadline? Um, or is it just an ongoing? 
and ongoing, but probably if we can get them within the next two weeks, at least something so she could put them in a report um, and we could post it on our website. That would be fantastic. I have actual photographs of the flower site down on Braddock Avenue before it was a flower site. It was a, a litter ridden, weed infested overgrowth, but they're actual photos. I have to find them, but to have like a before and after of some of the the, the, the way we were and the way the way we've become is um, I will work on that. I think that would be cool. Oh, that would be so fantastic. It really speaks of sustainability to see something that was trash laden uh, yeah. become a beautiful um, spot with flowers. Yes, yeah. I would I'll work on that. Thank Thanks. you. All right, let's move on to the manager's report. I typically don't put on put myself on the agenda. I have for the last nine months for the regular meeting, but I do have a couple of things I want to say tonight. First off is thank you very much to all the council for your faith in me and to put me in this position. And I look forward to leading Swissville Borough forward with forward with all of you. Can't say enough what it means to me that you that you have the faith in me to do this. And uh, I really look forward to continuing on the work we've we've been doing. Um, and once, and we're going to put some ads out here in the next week for other positions. So we can try to get back to staff fully, and then I can put the time into the management position that I need to do. Um, some things we've been, that haven't been done um, because I've been doing several roles for the last nine months um, and look forward to really move, moving, transitioning into the manager's job fully. So thank you all very much. Next thank you goes to Senator Costa. I just want to reiterate, I mentioned it last week for the for procuring uh, four, $4 million in grants uh, into Swissvale this year. Um, the uh, library uh, was the recipient of a one and a half million dollar RCAP grant and the uh, borough building, as we all know, was the recipient of a two and a half million dollar grant. So it makes me very comfortable now that this is a doable project financially. I mean, it was, I was, comfortable before, much more comfortable now um, that, uh, that this project is, you know, we'll be able to, to do this. And I will be sending out a doodle poll before the end of the week to the building committee um, to set up a kickoff meeting with core architects and LSSE engineers. Uh, we do have the contracts in place and signed, so we are ready to move forward. So we'll try to get that scheduled within the next seven to 10 days. Um, also, Chief Watson asked me if I could send a doodle poll out to all of council for interviews for part-time police officers. We have two candidates, so I'll do that also. We'd like to try to do those maybe next week if, we're, if, if, if it's not too much of an issue. Um, SEDCO had sent me some information this morning about their cleanups. They're going to do a cleanup every month like they've done in the past. The only thing they're doing different this year is they're meeting at different locations and uh, and uh, cleaning different areas of, of the borough. Um, the next cleanup is uh, May 21st at 9 a.m. and they are meeting at the borough building. They will be focusing on the municipal parking lot on Noble Street. And the next one after that is June 11th. They'll be meeting at the Swissville Library um, and they'll be focusing on the Monongahela Avenue corridor. Uh, I will have Sarah put the entire schedule up. They have a one a month through October. I will have her put it up on the uh, on the website. So if people want to, to join in. And don't forget, we have our electronics, household hazardous waste, bulk items, and tire collections scheduled also for May 21st from 9 to 1 at Memorial Park. So just queue up in the driveway of Memorial Park. Um, and, you know, everything is free, Swissville residents only. Um, so, you know, but any, any disposal is free and, you know, this, it's an expensive undertaking for the borough, but it keeps, um, uh, last year, I think we collected um, about 30 tons of electronics, household hazardous waste and other items. So it was well worth the effort, uh, you know, the, the financial effort that we put forth keeps it out of the, this is all stuff that can't go in the landfill, keeps it from being thrown over a hill, keeps it from being disposed illegally. Um, it's, it's, it's a good thing we do. Uh, and the last thing is um, been approached by uh, Sergeant Hahn of the police department. Um, if you remember last year, um, uh, Darren Poindexter, also known as Dex, uh, passed away and the there was a, an effort put forth to raise some money for a monument for him. 
And I believe at the time that uh, this was discussed, the um, the council said that you know they would match some funds for a monument since we're we had agreed to name the park after him. And the the group that Mr. Hahn is uh, is running is he has put uh, they've raised three thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars toward a monument for him. And I'm going to try and share it here. Can everybody see that? Anybody? Yep. Okay. Yes, visible. What's that? We can see it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So this is a this is a large rock that's about 42 inches wide and 42 inches high. And this would be the the language that they're proposing on it. I can send it out to everybody on council tomorrow, um, just so you you can you know you can read the language. Um, but they are proposing you know to do this. There's a little picture of of Mr. Poindexter um, with some biographical information and in, in on him. Um, so my question is: Council still um, still interested in sharing in the investment in this uh, in this um, monument? Uh, since we are, we did talk about renaming the park in his honor. I thought it was just, isn't it the basketball court? Or you're right, the basketball. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do we know what the total cost is, Greg? Overall? You know what he he did not. Let me just look at the text again. I don't believe he. Um. No, he didn't give me the total cost. Okay. I. Uh, I think it may be beneficial just for us to know what the total cost is, but this is literally right in alignment where uh, my thought process is. I, I literally called Deneen uh, during while we were going through our technical difficulties because for our Juneteenth celebration at the start of it, we would actually like to do the dedication of the of basketball court. Okay. in his name mm -hmm. so i uh, it'd be beneficial to know what the total cost is how long it would take to receive that um this would further just go in alignment where my thought process is and i'm glad to know that my thought process is in alignment with where theirs are um Deneen, uh suggested that i check with the family and make sure that they are available first before it's written as an affirmative that we're going to do the reveal at the start of the Juneteenth celebration at Collinwood Basketball Court. So we need to know the overall cost, how long it's yeah. going to take order. But me personally, I'm in support of it. I mean, they they came to us initially, asked us to vote on uh, naming the basketball court in his honor. We voted on this. We supported it. And I further support us um, assisting with the cost associated with naming the basketball court after him. Just uh, Sergeant Hahn just responded to me. He said it's the cost is eight thousand dollars. Oh, okay. He said three to four months to receive it. Oh, okay. is it okay if I make a comment on that? Um, so I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer, um, but to me. I mean, I understand people wanting to put up a monument and so forth, and I have been very guilty at my synagogue of being the person who thinks maybe we should put more money into programs instead of brass plaques. But I am a little bit concerned that in a community where, you know, I know we all, all see Scrap Wilson commenting on Facebook about how we need better facilities, we need to put more money into children's programs and things and youth sports that we would be spending, you know, it sounds like upwards of $4,000 of borough money on a stone instead of maybe what, you know, and I, I did not know this person, so maybe I'm out of line and somebody can totally tell me that. But to me, it seems like what a, what a better memorial be to somebody who, you know, did all of these wonderful things. I know Michelle Stanton, when this originally happened, read a very beautiful statement about him. So would it be a better memorial to put some funding into programs for kids or into the basketball court itself? I don't know if it needs maintenance or what it might need instead of, 
what appears to be a very, very expensive um, rock. I personally know this family. Um, so I want to be very careful in terms of the language that we use because that language can be a bit offensive to this family. It appears as a rock to you, but for this particular family and the community that is in support of this former Swissville resident, it is recognizing and acknowledging who he is and what he has done and, and what his life works commit, uh, contributed. Right, right. And that's why I said, you know, maybe I'm out of line. It's, I just, just wanted to throw and it I out get, there. I mean, that it, it, it hinges on the the comment that was made in terms of sensitivity training, because that there's there's a lot of things that happen that we're not personally connected to, that we can say certain things that come off offensive unintentionally. And I'm just going to let you know, I know this per this family personally, yeah. and your comments, they are offensive. Okay, I just wanted to say to me, I if it were me, and I'm not everybody, but if I if the Washington Avenue Bridge falls down. Don't don't spend money on a on a not that you would, but don't spend money on a thing if I fall off the bridge. Um, so to me, I would have a lot of difficulty. I mean, if we're if we're doing a matching, that was the language that Mr. Batchy used. So if we're doing matching, it sounds as if three thousand and something was already raised for a total cost of eight thousand. That would mean that we're being asked as a borough, however, and this is not you know, to cast any aspersions on the individual or his family or the monument or anything, I would have a problem authorizing thousands of dollars to be spent on this. Um, I don't know if it, I guess it's akin to like a headstone, this, you know, this monument, I would be, I would struggle to vote for allocating that much borough money to something like that. I mean, I'll tell you as a as a sort of parallel. I was speaking with Mr. Batchy about if we could turn a, the vacant lot that we own over here. It's covered in gravel by Arby's. If we could turn that into a park, and he estimated the cost of that would be somewhere around five thousand dollars. So we're being asked to come up with. It's not clear to me whether we're being asked to match that three thousand and change, or if we were being asked to come up with the rest of the money, up to eight thousand dollars. But to me, I would have a hard time spending three, four, five grand of the borough's money on this very expensive monument. Mr. Batchy, uh, is there a deadline that Sergeant Hahn needed to know our answer or what we want to do by? He, they wanted to order it this week so that they could get the, um, so they could get it in this summer. Because we're already looking at August or September delivery. Um, at the earliest. Yeah, um, I know Ms. Salisbury and Ms. Scales have shared a little bit about uh, their perspectives of this. Is there, are there any other council members that would like to weigh in? Yeah, I do want to get more information about him. I'm not, you know, a, a actual social resident, but I would like to know his achievements and what he does bring and has brought to the community because apparently his input has been sustainable for them to want to do this. So I would like more information so I can make my decision. Um, but it is important that we start acknowledging the people that make Swissville who it is. You know what I mean? You can't keep um, focusing on the cost. Sometimes you have, it's because there's people that's coming up behind them that they need to see these references to as people that saying that they remember who this person was and how that impacts them. And I think that's what's a lot the problem with the community at large. We focus on the small issues that really aren't that small, but you have to make a stand to do something that supports the community. And it might be expensive, but it might be impactful. So that's about what you're looking for. And that's what I would like to get more information on help to make my decision. Thank you, Ms. Dribbling. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate what and uh, what Ms. Dribbling just said as well, because, you know, I, I do agree that the cost seems a, a little high, but, you know, I also think about, uh, you know, the teens and the youth who play basketball there. And if, if, if they take the moment to read 
the monument and learn about, you know, a, a fellow community member. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it could have a positive influence. As, as Ms. Stribling said, I, I don't know. I, I didn't know Dex um, and, and I don't know much about him myself. Um, but, but there is, uh, you know, we, we can always use, uh, you know, good role models for our, our youth. And if, if that, um, you know, monument can remind our youth of a good role model, you know, I, I, I can support it, but I, I do agree, you know, I, I understand Ms. Salisbury's points as well, um, as to, you know, that is pretty costly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a it's a difficult decision. I mean, I'll, what, I'll what was, tell you. What was, what was the, sorry, what was the pre, you know, I, I understand this all started because there was a, did council previously agree to match the funds? I mean, if, if, okay. I, we I, agreed I, to name the, this is before you were in council. We agreed yeah. to name the basketball court after him. And then they independently started raising money through their own fundraising efforts. Okay. I, I just, from what Mr. Batchy said, I thought there was some sort of comment about a prior commitment to matching funds. Nothing like that was ever voted on, no. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you that if I if it comes to a vote and we're asked to give thousands of dollars for a monument for this person, I'll vote no, because I have to be a steward of the community's resources. We raised taxes by a mill because we said that we had to do that. And I think it's a slap in the face to the community if we then take five grand and put it into a, a memorial. I think that we have to look at what does the most good for the community. And what I don't wanna see is a bunch of kids who there's no sports league for them to be in because there's no funding for it. They're playing on um, perhaps, you know, like not the most uh, wonderful facilities when they do play basketball, but then they look over at an $8,000 memorial while they're doing that, you know, I don't want people playing with old basketballs and that are flat on a, you know, junky court or something like that, or not having nets or not having whatever it is that they might need because we spent the money on a monument to a person. That's just something that I'm fundamentally not okay with. And it's not any insult to this individual, to any of his achievements, to any of the work that he did in the community, to anyone in the community, to his family. I have to be a steward of the community's resources. And when we just raise taxes to pay for things, I don't think that we can spend three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 on a monument that we never agreed to pay for in the first place. I just wanna say, um, I, I get everybody's passion about this and that. We did agree to do something at, at the basketball courts. I think we should go back to the um, that committee, DEX's committee, and see if, if we can find another solution. Um, maybe a, one a little less cost prohibit, prohibitive. Uh, and uh, you know, we do want to do something there, and we need we need to. De DEX was a big part of this community, and he influenced a lot of people. And we need to honor him. He was a beautiful man inside and out and he gave a lot to Swiss Bell. and I don't I don't want to see this turn into uh, you know who's spending more money on what so let's go back to the the committee and talk it over and, and we'll come back to you with with another solution I think that's fair actually yeah yeah I just had no okay. idea that I had no idea that they were envisioning something that cost that much. I wish I'd known him. Um, but I mean, there, there's no question that historically there's been a tension uh, between the uh, Black community and uh, the police. And uh, we have a, a Swissville police officer who is uh, a white police officer who is um, uh, asking for this. And all I can say is that Mr. Poindexter must have um, really been good at uniting different groups of people and uh I, it's a shame that the man is not alive today to hear this this praise but uh but i i think i just wanted to to observe that the uh, um officer, officer Hahn is uh going to this extent uh, he must have been a good friend tell people you appreciate them while they're alive i've always right. 
believe that because sometimes, you know, people show up I, my, in my family, everybody would show up for a funeral and it's, you haven't seen somebody in 20 years and you wouldn't talk about how wonderful they are. I'm sure they would have appreciated to hear that while they were still alive. So I would encourage everybody to, sometimes we take people for granted. So I think, I think there's some good direction and wisdom here. Uh, Mr. Batchy, I know that they want to order it this week. I, I don't think that, I mean, in some sense, I think many of us feel that that dollar that sticker some sticker shock of being sprung on us so i don't know that anyone's really ready to like vote on it tonight um but i, I do think that to to mayor schwartzwelder's point that we would like to do something we do want to recognize his legacy and contributions to this community and so maybe there can be uh whether it be the mayor or miss scales or someone else uh who's who doesn't have an affiliation with them to continue that conversation to see what might be a way that we can honor that yeah, and I can reach out to Sergeant Hahn and uh, you know, and we'll bring this back to next to the to next month's meeting. Yeah. Mr. Miser, do you want to weigh in yeah, again? I know. Well, so it's it's actually about the previous uh, item that Mr. Batchy talked about, the hard to uh, dispose of event. So are, are we good to move on from this uh, the discussion re regarding the monument? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, Mr. Batchy, I had a uh, well, I, I think it was maybe it was a public Facebook post. I don't know. Um, talking about an option at the hard to dispose of event for walk-ups um, for those who either, you know, it's my understanding that the, the vehicle line gets fairly long and, and some residents were asking if there could be an option for those who are just carrying items to, to walk up and drop off their items. Is there any option for that or are the logistics too difficult? We can work it in um, because of the way the park's set up. I mean, somebody can come in and walk down the steps to the to the event area where we, we where we will be accepting the items. My only concern is people will be abandoning their cars on Church Street to walk everything down and causing more of a traffic jam. I mean, if you have people that live in the immediate neighborhood on Church and McClure and Hanover that want to bring a small flat screen TV or you know some other some other small items that they can carry in their hand, they don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, we can certainly accommodate them, but like I said, we just have to make sure that uh, people aren't just stopping, um, stopping on Church Street, getting out and running down just to circumvent the line. Makes sense. Thank you. And that's all I have in my report. Okay. Well, let's move on to the engineer's report. As soon as I find the unmute there. It's been, it's been muted for too long. Mr. President, I have nothing else to add. All my items were covered under your agenda this evening. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Crombie Collins, Water Authority Report. Hello, uh, this, so this is the Wilkinsburg Penn Joint Water Authority Board meeting for, from 426's overview. Uh, the Penn Vest lead line replacement program is moving along. The Cary Furnace Phase 3 is being managed by the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County. The mayor had asked me for an update regarding the phases. Um, phase 1 was actually the flyover bridge. Uh, phase 2 was the loop from the bridge to the existing building. And Phase 3 is from the site up the hill uh, to Swissvel and Rankin. And as I mentioned, that's the RAAC. And they're expected to award the um, phase three bid to JetJack, but there is no notice to proceed uh, date uh, due to material availability. The executive committee is meeting to review the authority's bylaws and the solicitor is working on extending the life of the authority. A new board member was welcomed. Derek McKinley was appointed by Wilkinsburg for a term ending 1-1-2027. Other business was conducted. The agenda, the engineer's report, the report of management and the previous meetings minutes are available online. There were 35 breaks system-wide from the last board meeting and there were no reported breaks in Swissville. Uh, now, starting next month, the executive director is going to expand the statistics um, that are reported to the board. Um, projects like mainline replacements, fire hydrant repairs, curb box work, et cetera, 
to give a broader picture of what is actually happening at the authority. And while the report of the breaks can continue for the borough, the DPW knows about them well before I find out about them at the um, board meeting. So it, it's something really that, you know, internally the borough is already well aware of. Um, and additionally, um, it was brought to my attention and I reported an issue to the authority um, where a water valve was being encased by a tree um, along the street on McClure. Uh, I actually included a picture in my report. If anybody has any issues with their shutoff valve access at the street, they should please contact the authority's customer service at 412-243-6200. In this case, um, when I showed the picture to the executive director, he said, you know, the tree or the roots could be causing issues um, such as leaking, and we definitely don't want that. And uh, just one follow up. I also attended the Allegheny League of Municipalities with the Water Authority. I attended eight of the seminars. I, I filled up my notebook with notes. Um, they were really helpful. I thought there was a lot of information and plus the banner community presentation and the exhibitor halls along with many of the borough reps um, that were there. Um, and uh, on a special note that um, I, I wasn't aware of, so I thought it was one uh, Swissville related item. Um, during Rich Fitzgerald's uh, presentation, he mentioned um, that there is now the Dr. Charles J. Martoni Endowed Scholarship, and it's being supported by a $10 million allocation from Allegheny County and offered through um, CCAC's Educational Foundation. And as many of you might know, you know, Dr. Martoni um, was active, an active Swiss Valian. He was on the county council and he was also a dean at CCAC. So I thought that was very um, informative and there's information about that on the county uh, website. And I think that he was is my report. I think he was a, a past president of council and also, I think, mayor of Swissville at one point. People often bring him up to me when I say I'm on council in Swissville. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one other item, Alcasan has raised its low income support to $40 a quarter. Um, and Jay Costa had actually talked about at one of his presentations about how water and sewer are, um, you know, being a big part of state infrastructure issues. And that is my report. Thank you for that report. Let's move to the solicitor. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Ms. Salisbury for her question and the comments on the bridge because I wanted to bring to council's attention the role of the PUC the fact that there had been a, a major reconstruction at one time with a PUC order distributing responsibility and the very much changed role of the Port Authority. Uh, in the past, they were involved because they were a user of the bridge, but now they have a key role like the railroad because of the potential danger to the bus traffic beneath the bridge. So um, I think as we work on this problem, um, those will be important considerations. So. That, that's all I have. I did want to make that comment. Okay, Thank if you. I add one thing. Um, our solicitor was also kind enough to meet with uh, me and Greg Batchy and also um, counsel for uh, the land bank, um, as well as the head of the land bank in order to talk about potentially acquiring um, a vacant property. I have for some time wanted to acquire the uh, site of the GAR home and see if we can make that into a park or something. The reason why I would like the borough to acquire it is that no, nobody who's like a private party would probably wanna acquire it because it has, what is it, $2 million or something like that and liens on it. Oh, just 1.5. 
Oh, there we go. Um, only 1.5. So um, that's the trouble. It, and then, you know, I think we placed a lien on it for $200,000 or something for the cost of the teardown of the old JAR home. So um, I looked it up and it shows online that it's about an acre, which in Swiss Vale is very unusual to find a, a continuous parcel that's that big. So um, I have had many people from um, that part of uh, Swiss Vale comment to me that we spend all of our time doing beautification sort of over toward where uh, Regent Square is and where Dickinson School is. And it's been true that historically a lot of council members lived in those areas. So um, that might account for perhaps some historical, uh, I don't wanna say neglect, but you know, lack of attention and beautification efforts on the other side of town that's closer sort of to Rankin Braddock area. Um, so I would love to see if we can acquire that um, and so we had an opportunity to discuss some legal options for how we might be able to do that. It looks like the land bank may not be the way to go. Um, and so we're going to continue having discussions to see what our options are, um, because, you know, whether we end up doing it or not, we need to know what our options are to even have that discussion. Um, but a lot of people, as I've mentioned, have said that they would like somewhere for their kids to play. I've heard that people want a dog park. I've heard, um, you know, just that generally that side of town is a little bit less maintained and beautified, if you will, than the other side of Swiss Vale. So I've been trying to work on that and see what we might be able to do. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Ms. Salisbury. When, when you texted me about that, I was really excited because I think that would be a huge, huge asset, um, both in size and in worth for the borough. So thank you for that. You guys ready to adjourn? I'd love to entertain a motion. Let's hang out a couple more hours. Let's I'll make a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion adjourned at 9.33 p.m. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank